kind of quiet. We're not bad, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Uh, we have a hearing, uh, and this is an ordinance amending Chapter 5.53 of the Marin County Code to eliminate an exception for owner-occupied structure from the county's fair housing ordinance providing source of income protections for recipients of third-party rental assistance. Lili. Good afternoon, board. We'll be quick. Um, Lili Thomas with the Marin County Community Development Agency. The item in front of you originally came out of the series of workshops that were held in um, 2015 and the spring of 2016 to look at um, the rental crises that a number of your constituents were facing and, um, and looking at ways that the county could provide uh, additional protection to renters. And one of the um, recommendations was a source of income protection um, a fair housing ordinance to expand housing choice, especially for folks who have third party vouchers like Section 8 or VASH. And um, when your board adopted the ordinance in November of last year, um, you asked us to come back and remove an exemption that we had in the original ordinance that would not have covered owner occupied and smaller. Um, complexes and so this is to really recognize the type of housing that we have in this community which is primarily single-family homes um, we've really been relying on second units and junior second units as a source of our um, affordable housing and so the intent of this amendment is to expand um, this protection to those type of units and Debbie will talk a little bit more in detail about that. Good morning, Debbie LaRue, CBA. On March 7th, your board held a public first reading of, the of this proposed ordinance amending County Code Chapter 553, the County's Fair Housing Ordinance, providing source of income protections for recipients of third party rental assistance. This amendment furthers the County's fair housing goals by eliminating an exception for owner occupied structures. It, simpl not, it simplifies ordinance applicability and supports an original intent of the ordinance to inhibit a discriminatory rental environment by preventing property owners from disseminating advertising materials that express preference based on a person's source of income. This ordinance does not require that a landlord grant preference to a prospective tenant with third party rental assistance, only that they consider them on equal footing as other tenants or prospective tenants. Landlords are still encouraged to screen tenants in accordance with the best practices of their industry. For example, landlords can consider references, rental history, credit history, and the applicant's ability to pay their portion of the rent. We recommend that your board consider adoption of the proposed ordinance and we welcome any questions. Thank you. Questions from the board? Anyone in the audience want to comment from the public? Yes, please come forward. Good morning, Supervisors. Steve Bingham again. I thought there was going to be some opposition to this and so I stayed and I'm <laughs> pleased to see there isn't any. That's just, just wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Hi, and I will be brief as well. Um, Casey Epp, again, speaking on behalf of Fair Housing Advocates of Northern California, just wanted to express our strong support for this amendment. We just really see how it um, opens up the fair housing choices for our most vulnerable populations in this county. So thank you for your support. Raleigh Katzmer, Association of Public Employees, we are continuing to support your efforts to make housing more affordable and more available to people. I encourage you to thank adopt you. this amendment. Thank you. All right, do I have a motion to approve? I will move and I have just one comment oh, and yes, request I, of staff. Okay, if anyone else comments, let me know. Okay, so um, I just want to I just want to um, emphasize, re-emphasize um, the point uh, that has been, there's been a point of confusion in the past and maybe we're going to point to the place where there's not, that um, this action doesn't remove a, a landlord's ability to screen a candidate or applicant for, um, for housing. Um, the way they would uh, regardless and looking at credit references the whole nine yards so I think that's really important this is not a, a mandate to rent to it's just a, a, a mandate to please don't uh, discriminate against someone for their based on source of income and then two I can't remember if this is part of our housing program but you mentioned in the staff report the landlord incentive program that we do have uh, uh, as in funded right now and active and doing wonderful things did we include in our sort of housing work plan or consideration of any kind of grant program that would could lend itself towards helping 
um, helping people convert to uh, create junior second units or second units um, that it, you know with some sort of obligation to you know a participation in the Section 8 program or something like that. We yes. Cutting to lily pad homes. Um, yeah, there's two things. Yeah. So your um, board awarded lily pad homes some community service grant right. funds. Right. And in addition, um, there's funds that are available through a collaboration with the Housing Authority and the Community Development Block Grant Program that awards funds to um, low-income homeowners primarily to do accessibility improvements. But those funds can also be used to add second units or junior second units when the tenant is going to be a low-income tenant and rented through Section 8 program and that are a deferred interest loan that are available to property owners. Okay, so I would suggest given that we made recent code amendments um, last week that speak to junior second units and accessory dwelling units that we um, amplify um, the presence of some of those programs. And then also um, I think it would, I would love to look at in the future some sort of coupling up with a program, I know they exist here and in Sonoma County, that help landlords or potential landlords, new landlords, um, go through the, um, the uh, advertisement and screening process and lease term development for, for new landlords. I think that there's probably, there's matching services and also there's some ways to help folks actually enter into a business that may be new to them um, and they may have some trepidation about. But very much, as you said, this is a potential source of creating new housing stock, more affordable housing stock. So those are my comments. All right. And if there are no more comments. I'll, I'll just make yes. it quick uh -huh. and just um, to reiterate a little bit more uh, background context on this. Um, this particular amendment to um, our effort to uh, address source of income discrimination really came about at the request of the landlord community as well as support from the tenant community um, in, in kind of more equitably um, spreading the um, uh, reach, if you will, of this amendment. And just to underscore, as Lili mentioned, in response to Supervisor Rice, um, the Landlord Partnership Program absolutely does encourage folks to seek uh, funds to do rehabs of their units to, um, in turn, rent out to uh, Section 8 holders. Um, the program's off to a great start. I can't say it enough, I guess. <laughs> Haven't said it in about a week. Just so <laughs> yeah. a couple days ago. That, yeah, exactly. So, um, I think this goes yeah. hand in hand. <laughs> do I have a motion? I move. Okay, do I have a second? second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Lily and Debbie. <laughs>